Such an incredible plant to go over today. Today we're talking about Wapato, also known as Katniss. And yes, the Hunger Games lady is named after this plant. Also known as Rat Potatoes. Just one of the coolest tubers ever. And this is my second year harvesting these with the Prairie Island Indi Indian community and my friend Linda Black Elk. Black Forager was there. My friend Tim Clemens, MN Forager, was there. It was a great time. Sam Thayer was there too. Just look at these things. They're so cool. It's like if an alien and a potato had a baby. Here's what we're going to cover. Harvesting and cleaning. Hash browns. Pan roasting. Drying. And cooking with meat. There is a lot of info packed into this video. So if you are not familiar, this is what the plant looks like. But they're going to have, he they can have huge leaves too. And generally speaking, the bigger le the leaves, the bigger the plant. What we're doing is looking for these because this is October and the plants have kind of died back. Now we could have gone, uh, last year we went and the plants were still visible and that's fine too. But around October is uh, seems to be like the sweet spot. And what I'm doing is digging a hole about one foot by one foot. Uh, or, you know, you could probably get them as big as like a manhole cover. Here, I'm going to do another one. You can see you're going to get filthy. My camera, oh my God, I was so filthy. The camera was caked in mud after doing this. But what I'm doing is making a big hole. And then I'm going to hollow out what is called like when I get down to the tuber layer. Okay, so the tuber layer right there is like, it's like eight inches or so beneath the surface. And once I get the hole dug, I'm going to use both my hands. And you can see I'm just kind of like hollowing out this layer underneath the ground. And you see they're just all in there. And once you get a hole dug, you Sam Thayer was picking like 30 Wapato out of a single hole. And it also seemed like there was a lot more Wapato this year than last year, which kind of makes it seem like our interaction actually helps spread the plant, which is one thing that Sam Thayer has talked about, but that's what you're looking for. If you find small ones, put them back because they're going to keep growing. Okay, processing. So this is not rocket appliances here. We're going to take the Wapato home and we're going to wash them until they're clean. And after they're washed, they would last for a couple weeks in a fridge. And I'll also show you how you can preserve them long term. Now for processing, this is tedious. Every single solitary Wapato is going to have the little tail removed. It's not worth keeping it on. Trust me, I tried. And you're going to be peeling them by hand, every single one. That one's got a little discoloration, so I'm going to trim that off. And then just take a peeler and you know what to do. Watch a show or something, listen to a podcast. It'll take some time cooking. One of the first things that we did that we they served at the breakfast at the, with the Prairie Island Indian community was Wapato hash browns. So these are drier than potatoes. They're also slightly bitter, which I actually really like. And they have enough starch where you don't have to par cook these. You can just mix them up, a little salt and pepper, and then just kind of make them into a patty. And they're going to hold together. They have a lot of starch. They're going to hold together. And then you just fry them press them down into a nice cake. You want to use um, a cast iron skillet here, ideally. And as you'll see, they will fry up. They fry up nice and crisp because they have a lower water content than potatoes. That's really cool. These are, They're very dry, which means they're also really good in soup. And I could have got a little more color on that, but you get the idea. I'll finish off with some ramp salt. Flaky, crunchy salt on hash browns is a must. Some chives, I have some pork cheek bacon I snuck back in my suitcase from Tuscany. Slap an egg on it, call it a day, add a little hot sauce. Yeah, you guys know what to do there. Very simple. Okay, next, also very simple, is just pan roasted. So this is the best thing to do if you have a duck breast and you render the fat from a duck. What I've done here, I've cut the Wapato in half. So just like Brussels sprouts or... Uh, potatoes, you're going to cook the cut side down because it has the most surface area and that's going to get crisp and golden brown. Just look at that. So I get them hot, I put the Wapato in the pan, and then I put the pan in a 350 degree oven for, I don't know, maybe like five minutes. Get them perfectly golden brown like that. 
And then we're going to add a little bit of shallot at the end. Wapador, a little bit bitter. You could also add like chopped rosemary and a little handful of Parmesan cheese at the end. That richness will be good with the bitterness. Add the shallots and just cook it for a bit, just to take the raw off. And then I have parsley and rosemary there. You could use your favorite herbs. I mean, sage, thyme would be awesome. You could cook it with whole thyme sprigs. Give them a toss. And that's fantastic. That's a great way to have them. Very simple. Okay, you can also dry them. And this is something that I took from Sam Thayer. Sam has a different method. Basically, for drying here, I'm just going to slice them on a mandolin, and I'm going to dry them until they're cracker dry. What Sam Thayer does is he boils them and then mashes them, and that is going to reduce the bitterness. Because cooked like this, they will be it will be slightly bitter, uh, but as I prepare them, we're going to have them kind of as oatmeal. It's not really going to make a difference, but you you will notice it. And if you don't can't do like any bitter at all, you can boil them and mash them and then dry them. So after they're dried, you'll have these nice little crispy chips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to grind them in a spice grinder or a Vitamix into a flour. So you can also dry them whole in, in soup chunks. And that's what I did with those. So then you could just like toss those right into a crock pot. And if they're cooked in liquid, they're going to be, uh, you're not going to taste the bitterness. Okay, here is our Wapato breakfast. Kind of like Wapato oatmeal. I'm going to start off with milk. Then I'm going to add a little bit of my wild vanilla extract. I'll put a link to that in the recipe description. And now I'm going to add black walnuts that I just cracked to the milk. And you could soak those, you could warm it and soak those overnight too. I'm going to take a couple spoonfuls of Wapato flour. Like I said, you could also probably leach this by just pouring water over it and then pouring the water off for a couple days until, uh, until it doesn't, until you don't taste any bitterness. But we're going to put a bunch of maple syrup on this and berries and stuff. And I, I ate the whole thing. It was fine. It was a little bit bitter, but I like it. You, it makes you know what you're eating. And we're just going to cook that until it's thick like oatmeal. I mean, again, this is a Sam Thayer idea, and it's just it's just such a creative way to use these. So I got the walnuts in there. You taste them. They flavor the liquid. And then I'm topping it with wild blueberries, some raspberries, black walnuts, maple syrup, and a pinch of cinnamon. Okay, another thing that's really, really good. This might be my favorite. Just cooked meat with Wapato in it. And we had this at the Wapato breakfast with the Prairie Island Indian community too. So bison, have it with bison, pulled meat. You could cook them beforehand and add them to it. You could add them at the beginning. They're really sturdy. They're not really going to break down too much. Toss them in a crock pot. But I mean, that's almost like a perfect meal right there. Just add some greens and just really a nice way to have them. I hope you had fun learning a little bit about Wapato harvesting and some of the interesting ways that you can cook it. Such a cool plant. Thanks for watching.